force between two current carrying wires. Just like in the electrical case, we have one charge creates an electrical field, and then when you put another charge there, it either attracts it or repels it. Well, you could do the same thing for a, a current. Let's say you have a wire, and let's say it's carrying a current like this. And then you have another wire carrying a current like this. And we can assume that the wires are relatively long, so we can use Ampere's law. So let's imagine they're relatively long, and there's a distance of uh, D between them. Okay, so tell me what, how much do they attract each other? Do they repel each other? And tell me what's the force between them. Okay, well here's how you do it. You say the top one, let's say they could even carry different currents, I1 and I2. Okay, the top one creates a B field around it, right? So take your right hand and again apply the right hand rule. Curl your fingers. So the, if this one creates a B field here that is out of the board. And then it goes in. And then over here it goes into the board. So at the location of wire, the bottom wire, the B field created by this is into the board, right? So it goes out and comes back in. So you, if you call this wire 1, wire 1, the B, this is B1 coming out. And then this is B1 going in, right? Therefore, according to what we learned in chapter 29, when there is a B field, it creates a force on our current carrying wire, right? The force is equal to IL crossed into B, right? So if the current is going to the right and the B field is going in, the force is up. Okay. Now by action and reaction, there should be a force by this guy on that guy, right? So let's do that. Uh, the current, this current, put your right hand in the direction of the current, curl your fingers so it's out of the board. So at the, at the position of the wire one, the B field is coming out. That's B2. Okay, so it creates a B field out, then it curls around, and then down here, B2 is into the board. But we're not as interested in that uh, over there. Okay, so this B field is going to exert a force on that current carrying wire, I crossed into B in. As a matter of fact, it better be in, because if this one attracts this, this cannot repel that. They can't both go up, <laughs> you know. <laughs> that would be really weird. They're both going up. So yeah, they attract each other. So from this we learn two wires carrying current in the same direction attract each other. This is kind of weird, isn't it? Because two charges that are the same charge repel each other, right? So these are two wires carrying current in the same direction, attracting each other. That's weird. Um, and now let's find the force of that. We'll be done in a minute. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Are, are, is your class still going? We'll be done in a minute. Oh, you will be done. Yeah. Okay. okay. So uh, two wires carrying current in the same direction attract each other. And then what's the force of that? Okay, so the force, we could just find the bottom force and the top force will be the same. Okay, so I'm going to say the force is equal to the current, this current I2 times its length and then times the B field created by wire one, 
All right? And then the angle between them is 90 anyway, because the B field is into the board, the current is on the page. Okay, so the angle is 90. And then what's the B field created by wire one? Well, if it's a long wire, and if the two wires are close to each other, I can use the result from the Ampere's law, mu zero i over two pi r. mu zero i1 over 2 pi d, where d is the distance between them. That's it, mu zero l i1 i2 times 2 pi d. So it kind of resembles this equation. It doesn't really look like it, but it's the equivalent. The force between two point charges, K, Q1, Q2 over R squared, this is the force between two current carrying wires, mu zero L, the, their length, I1, I2, so this is like the Q1, Q2, and then two pi D. Okay.